Well, let's get back to the MCG and back to cricket because it was cricket staff that saw the talent that Shane Warne possessed from a very young age. Many say they didn't really need to coach Shane but rather provided him with the tools and the environment to perform his best. He had incredible skill and ability on any stage. Joining me live is former Australian cricket coach John Buchanan. John, thank you for your time. He transcended your sport of cricket, but he was a rock star in it. Why? What did he bring to the game? I think he brought everything to the game, Laura. Um, you know, just for instance, every series that we would start generally started at the Gabba in November, and all of us were waiting to see what Shane Warne would roll up in. And uh, it would be from new boots and shoes that he wanted to proudly display to his pants. He went with flares one season. Then it was a diamond earring. Um, and of course the hairstyles were uh, every year something a little bit different. So he was a magician on the field, but he knew how to embrace entertainment uh, which I think is why we see what we're seeing at the moment, the tributes that have been flowing. Yeah, absolutely. His skill was unmistakable. Uh, you know, and I'm no expert in these areas, but, you know, he leaves quite uh, a legacy and he smashed a lot of records. But, w but what did he do for team morale? Why was he such an important component of the team? Well, look, I think... You know, just thinking a little bit more about it over the last few days or so, I think we've all been very fortunate in that period that, that I was associated with the team from 99 to 2007, as you mentioned, there were lots and lots of records being broken, of which Shane was very much a part of breaking his own records. But we wouldn't have been able to achieve what we did. We had a fantastic outfit, but obviously Shane Warne was a key member of us being able to achieve what we did. And... and uh, you know, I think we're all very grateful to, you know, have been part of that that era. I mean, obviously, he was doing a lot of things before I started in 99 and stayed in the game for some 15, 15 years, you know, which was an incredible feat in itself um, in both formats of the, of the game. And through that time, he broke record after record and everybody has their cherished moment. Everybody has a, an image, everybody has a picture, a story about Shane Warne. I think, in a sense, everybody feels they they know him and they have some part of him that they'll hang on to for the rest of their lives. Yeah, you're spot on with that, John. I also hear that he was a world-class sledger on the pitch. Have you seen up close how Shane Warne was able to get into his opponent's heads? Well, you mentioned skill, and, and obviously there's a physical skill, there's a technical skill, there's certainly a mental skill, but there is this thing called tactical skills, and Shane was a master at using either his body, his language, his eyes, his presence to unnerve unwitting opposition. Uh, he, he was a master of that and, and continued to develop that right through his career because obviously as he got older, uh, like all of us, you know, some of the physical attributes uh, are disappearing. So he compensated for those with his, his mental skills, his ability just to be in the moment, just to be really compartmentalised so he knew clearly what he needed to do and then had the technical skills to do it. But couple that with his gamesmanship sledging some people call it um you know he was again a master of that and really was able to as you say get under the, the skin of not only an individual but also could get under the skin of a whole team and a unit and so again one of those incredible traits and attributes that he brought to our group yeah, John, and it's, it's like he, him and his opponents did leave that sledging on the field. It wasn't done with malice. Everyone knew it was part of the game. And we see that in the tributes we've seen from his uh, former opponents because um, they became really, really good friends. Is, is that what cricket is all about or is that a, a special Shane Warne thing? No, look, I, I think that's what sport's all about. You know, sport is about winning and losing on the field. And you do everything you possibly can within the laws and the regulations of the game to do that. 
But when once you leave the field, and, and cricket is no different to that, it's time to actually then talk to people. It's actually time to meet people away from the battle, away from the cauldron of competition and get to know them as as people. And indeed, you know, again, that was probably one of Shane's really good skills that he was a, not necessarily always a person who would wander in somebody else's dressing room. It was more people coming in to want to talk with, with Shane Warren. But in the process of talking, he's filing away information that will be valuable to him the next day he goes out to play them. So, you know, again, a person that had this incredible ability to store things in his mind and then bring them to play when he got onto his stage. And, you know, he would always say to everybody, you know, keep the game really simple, but didn't actually realise how good he was at actually storing information. You know, as I said, he went in the game for 15 years. He, he could remember back a long time about incidents, players, venues and so on, which was a, an amazing ability to have and then to be able to tap into his skill. He was a, therefore a great. <laughs> John, just before we let you go, you know, cricket is a, a gentleman's game. I think Shane Warne probably pushed the boundaries of that just a little bit. But in doing that, did he inspire a whole generation of kids that that probably didn't think bowling was all that cool and thought, actually, Shane Warne's a spin bowler. Maybe I want to do that. Well, he did. Um, there's no doubt. It wasn't just the leg spin. It was the whole package, wasn't it? I mean, it was the blonde hair. It was... Um, the way that he went about his game, he was an entertainer and so on. But in that period where he started in the early 90s, you know, the West Indies had dominated world cricket up until that point in time, really. And so their whole game was built around fast bowling. And there was not much around in terms of, of spinners. You know, the odd one in India and the odd one in Sri Lanka, but, but nothing like Shane. And so suddenly Shane bursts onto the scene. The Gatting ball then sent Shane Warne's... Um, presence, his profile, everything about him through the roof. And from then on, he was able to, to deliver on that. You know, he did speak a good game and in the main he delivered a great game. And that whole package was something then that I think, yeah, definitely has inspired everybody to look at spin bowling. And now spin bowling is one of the strengths of the modern game, T20 cricket, spin bowling, not necessarily always leg spin, but spin bowling has a, has a real place in cricket right through in all formats. John, thank you being, for being so generous with your time this morning. It was great to chat all things warning. Appreciate it. Thanks, Laura.